Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy here for the Daily Blob where you say, I'll take what I had yesterday. All I want is what I had yesterday. I, fa I found what I really like and so that's all I want. Can I please have that? No. <laughs> No, it's the modern world of artificial intelligence. Always bigger, better, faster, more expensive. If you actually find something that you like that does exactly what you need it to do, well, you're still gonna be upgrading regardless. Um, I think this is interesting. There's a post coming from Sam Altman, um, and I think it is an interesting thing to be thinking about with artificial intelligence uh, and the AI platforms, right? These platforms are things that you do not own. They're essentially software as a service that their back end integrates into LLM, all these models or whatever else. And one of the things that I've noticed over the past couple of years uh, using these platforms is the performance of the platforms seem to be all over over the board even now, right? So I use ChatGPT, I pay 20 bucks a month for ChatGPT. One of the big things I do is I use, I do it, use it to create featured images and wow, that performance. Sometimes I give it a request and it gives me an image back relatively quickly. Other times I give it a request and I go have dinner and watch a movie and come back and it's almost done, right? I think one of the interesting things that I found is that the performance seems to be rather all over the place. Now for me, all I'm doing is creating featured images or doing some other basic stuff. It's not a big deal. But an important thing to understand about these AI companies is they really want you to integrate their products into all of your workflows. The idea is everything that your company does is going to flow through artificial intelligence. And when we say flow through artificial intelligence, we mean flow through their systems. So when performance, <laughs> is all over the place. What, what does that actually mean for you to be able to deliver, deliver products uh, and services or whatever uh, to your particular customers? Uh, so this comes from uh, Sam Altman on X. Uh, we have a ton of stuff to launch over the next couple of months, new models, products, features, and more, which is fine, right? They wanna launch more products, cool. Am I gonna use them? Probably not. <laughs> But anyways, hey, they want to launch more products. But what I find is interesting down here, though, please bear with us through some probable hiccups and capacity crunches. Although it may be slightly choppy, we think you'll really love what we've created for you. So think about this, right? Think about if you've actually figured out a workflow uh, for using AI, if you figured out a workflow uh, for using ChatGPT. Not only that, you figured out that workflow for yourself, and so you've got all the other team members on board uh, to use your same type of workflow. One of the things that we've seen with so many of these tech companies is that they are forcing employees to use AI. You must use AI, right? Microsoft even. Microsoft is now literally doing reviews based off of your, if you're using AI products, right? So here's the thing, right? They're tightly integrating artificial intelligence into their workflows, into everything that they're doing. And they, they find the product. They find the products and services that do what they're supposed to do. One of the things with a lot of these companies is that they keep growing, right? They keep growing and they keep uh, placing more and more demand on the infrastructure and the resources that they already have. And so one of the, the things to look at is how the performance of their systems is kind of all over the board. And then one of the things to be thinking about here, if Sam Altman is talking about, hey, they're going to be coming out with all these cool products, but in order to deploy all these cool products, the core services that you're currently using, their performance may get all wiggly. Is that something that you feel comfortable with, right? When we look at how AI is being deployed, it's very, it's very interesting on this whole deployment model, right? So when we normally think about software as a service, you need so many resources for so many users, right? Let's say you got a thousand users, um, you're doing, let's say, an email service. So you got a thousand users, eh, every thousand users needs their own essential server, right? You need one, a server with a CPU and 32 gigs of RAM, and for a thousand users, maybe you need a terabyte hard drive, something like that, right? So a thousand users needs one server, so 2,000 users needs two servers, so 3,000 users need three servers, and basically you go that way, that, that's how you scale. One of the things that's interesting though when you start looking at this whole AI stuff is this whole, 
demand and utilization, right? It's, it's when people are actually using the product, the resources that are actually required in order to give the responses is much more, much more wiggly, I would say. So they seem to be uh, deploying uh, their, their infrastructure, they seem to be deploying new GPUs and new systems in a much more ad hoc fashion. And what this means is people that have been using the, the services for two years may actually see performance problems based off of all the new work that they're doing, uh, you know, more users coming in, work that they're doing change up, even though they've been using it for two years and they've gotten very used uh, to the service that they've been receiving. And I think this is gonna be an interesting thing to consider going forward is how comfortable do you feel with that, right? If you look at things like deploying your own internal artificial intelligence systems, I've talked about Olama before. So Olama is an AI framework that allows you to run many different models uh, if you know how to you can spin up Llama. So that's actually an AI model that you can actually spin up. One of the things to consider is if you actually build out your own infrastructure, then you know more or less exactly what it does. You know what the resource utilization is, you know how to scale up the whole nine yards, you know what the performance is going to be. And I think that's gonna be something to kind of consider as we go into the future, as you start thinking about integrating artificial intelligence into your systems. Do you want artificial intelligence uh, products that are going to be continuously improved but as they get continuously improved, you're going to run into quirks with them, right? Or do you want AI products that 10 years from now are gonna provide you the exact same response you got today, but along the way, you're not gonna have to worry about it. There are gonna be no blips. As long as, long as a CPU fan doesn't fail, the system is gonna just keep doing what it's doing. I think there's gonna be a big thing to consider. And this is where we talk about things like AI products. And you need to be thinking about artificial intelligence and these products from a larger concept than just the LLMs and that type of deal. We talk about things like service level agreements. So what service level agreement is what is the performance? When you purchase this product, what is the actual performance, right? So if you get an ISP, right? You get your, your internet connection. So if you're just a residential customer and you get an internet connection, uh, you have no SLI. Right, it costs you 100 bucks a month, and basically you get whatever the hell Quest or Verizon gives you. Generally, they try to make it good so that you don't leave, but there's no real legal requirement for them to do so. If you get business class internet, so for myself, until recently, I always actually got business class internet at my house, right? I had Comcast business class, oh, I don't know, 15, 16 years ago uh, when I lived in, Bal in downtown Baltimore, when I lived out in the outskirts of Baltimore, I had Verizon business class fiber to the house. Uh, now I don't because things have gotten better. But one of the reasons I did that is I actually had an SLA, right? A service level agreement. This is the level of service that you are <laughs> guaranteed uh, to be provided for it while you're with the service. One of the curious things to be thinking about with artificial intelligence as we start going forward is to start looking past the models and everything and start looking at whole, that whole idea of service level agreement. What AI provider or vendor is going to guarantee you a level of access, not just user accounts, not just 20 user accounts, but when you have those 20 user accounts, you can expect a text response within, or you can expect this number of tokens to be, be able to be processed within one second, right? So you get that context window, if you get if if it's a, it's a thousand tokens in, you know, twenty tokens back out, you know, we we guarantee we will give you a service level agreement of being able to process, you know, a thousand tokens per second. That type of thing. I think that's gonna be an interesting thing to start considering to make sure that when you scale up these systems, they continue to perform in the expected way and you don't run into any kind of uh, weird problems. <laughs> let's just let's just say weird problems. Uh, so what do you think about this? What do you think about Sam Altman coming out, talking about all the amazing things that are coming down the pike uh, for ChatGPT? Uh, On the other hand, also saying, eh, 
there's probably going to be some hiccups. Do you really care about those amazing things, or are you more concerned about those hiccups as I am? I don't know. Put your thoughts uh, down below. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like these videos, give us a thumbs down. Give us an amazing comment. Give us a horrible comment. All that matters is that interaction. It is the modern world of social media. Anyways, uh, we are having fireside chats. Uh, tomorrow, we're having the uh, uh, CTO and co-founder of an integrations company come on. We're going to be talking about integrating artificial intelligence into their systems and how well that did or did not work. Next week, we're going to have the VP for AI models for IBM on. He's going to talk about what IBM is doing with AI and how what they're doing with models and that type of deal. Uh, you can go to silicondojo.com. You can uh, sign up for free. You can RSVP. Basically, these are Zoom calls, so you can ask questions, that type of thing. Be part of the group. Anyways, that's all I got with that. See y'all later.